Hey, just letting you know, this tier list was originally streamed over at twitch.tv slash jeffthu. So if you like what you see here and want to see more or you want to come hang out, talk anime or whatever you feel like, come follow me over there. This Saturday at noon PST, I'm going to be doing a blind run through Fear and Hunger, so if you like seeing me suffer, you don't want to miss that. Hello and welcome. It's me, Jeff Thu. Today, we're... I, I, I don't have my intro uh, ideas thing because uh, we're doing a live stream. Everybody on the live stream has already heard me say hello, but I'm saying hello to you for the sake of the YouTube video. By the way, I've got some gamer subs here. We're not really sponsored by Gamer Supps on this video, but you want to go buy some Gamer Supps at my Gamer Supps code. Uh, go buy some Gamer Supps. It's good. They got Jujutsu Kaisen flavors right now. What are we doing? We're ranking some anime. I already put out the ones to watch on the main channel. If you want to know what the absolute top recommended anime of the season are, in my opinion, you can go check that out. Card, I'm sure, is up there, or just wait until the end card. Click on that. Right now, we're looking at everything and we're gonna rank it from banger to trash although i mean trash is kind of better than bad it was confusing with trash and good trash so we're just gonna say bad and trash and some trash is good some trash might be a little bad we're gonna start ranking stuff um when we when we need it we will maybe add another tier i'm not sure so first up is am i actually the strongest uh an isekai um that I, it's got like an RPG stat screen pretty early on, I think, which is one of my measures of trash, the time to stat screen. But also, it, it goes from zero to titty sucking and in like under 10 minutes. So that's that's going in the trash. That's going in the trash right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he reincarnates as a baby. Uh, he beats a powerful demon lady up. Um, and then he's hungry and he's like, oh man, can you give me some milk from your mommy milkers? And she's like, well, master, I would need to be pregnant to do that. So obviously you see how that goes there. Just makes sense. He also makes her a clo makes her clothes out of magic. It's really, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. Maybe anime was a mistake. All right, next up we got Ayaka, which is an original action adventure type anime. Um, I kind of feel like the first episode hit me as like, it was a little mid, but then I feel like if I was 14, I would really fuck with the power systems and the characters and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, like, it's on the edge of mid, but I'm gonna put it in good. I personally wasn't super compelled to watch a lot of it, but it's got some neat ideas. It's about this kid from like this chain of islands off the coast of Japan where everyone's got magic powers and his dad had really good magic powers but then his dad died so he had to move to Tokyo and but then he moves back after being an orphan for a while it's got it's got some interesting ideas didn't super grab me might grab some of you pretty solid I think uh next up is Bang Dream It's My Go uh now this is kind of like an idol franchise but uh instead of idol music they play rock music um, so if you're, if you like rock, it's pretty great. There's also a really great mobile game where they have the girls do like covers of popular J-Rock songs and it's like a rhythm game. Uh, I think it's pretty fun. Uh, I'm not a big rhythm gamer, so like I can't give you the, the lowdown on if it's like a top tier rhythm game or not, but I, you know, for something you can play on mobile, I think it's pretty great. You know, the original series was about some girls starting a girl band at their all girls high school. Uh, it's My Go takes place at a different high school, but is, you know, same fundamental concept. First episode struck me as a little melodramatic, but also, like, in, in kind of a good way. You know, like, like there's this one girl who used to be in a band, she's got some trauma, she doesn't, like, want to be in a band again, but she does, but only if her bandmates, like, promise to band marry her and be in a band with her for life, which is a big commitment. So it... It's like a little, little intense, but um, kind of, I don't know, it's kind of good. Uh, the CGI in this series is amazing. It's from Sans again, who are kind of like underrated, you know, like Orange gets all the hype for their CGI, but Sans again has been kind of like the second tier for like a really long time of like that, that Guilty Gear style of anime looking 
3D animation. Yeah, Bang Dream has that. It looks good. Got really good music. Um, if you like music stuff, I'd recommend it. Yeah, it's Yuri Undertones for sure. Is all the band stuff an allegory for love? You know idol anime. You know, you know this stuff. Next up is Bastard. Um, I've only watched like a little bit of this on Netflix. Um, and I'm kind of conflicted because like I like the premise. I've read a bit of the original manga. I like that. But I also feel like Bastard is one of those series that like really, really benefited from that like 90s OVA style that the original was in. And it's cool that they're telling the story in modern day. Just drags it down a little bit for me, but I, I put that in good. I appreciate what it's doing. Um, it's just one of those things where the modern computer done anime style doesn't really work as well as cell animation. Next up, Reign of the Seven Spellblades. This one is a banger. If you've seen the ones to watch, you already know why. Basically, it takes a lot of ideas from Harry Potter and actually like fleshes out the world building to make it good. Um, so like demi-human rights is like an issue that comes up there. You see this girl here kind of looks like Hermione. Um, she like brings up demi-human rights very early on in the first episode. They're watching a parade with magical creatures. She's like, man, it's inhumane to be sticking a troll in one of these uh, parades. They're very intelligent creatures and she gets in an argument with this guy who's like they smash up our fields and stuff and she's like well our, our fields are you know they, they were built on their ancestral land and you know they don't speak our language so we can't and it's it's like there's a lot of layers to it really good world building really great characters um like like they they're clearly drawing from harry potter but also building on it the action rocks um it's got an amazing op um it's just solid all around, uh, and you know, it's nice to have a good, a good fantasy that's not an isekai. Next up, Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this right in banger, honestly. I, I like, I, with the caveat that I'm not like fully caught up on last season and into this one, and I've heard there's some stuff with the animation that's not as good as it was last season. I've read this part of the manga it slaps that part where they fight a lot. That's like all of Bleach, but it's okay. Cause you know, Bleach is a souls like in manga form, but yeah, Bleach solid. This part of the manga is, is like really good. And the fact that they're fixing stuff up from the, you know, where the manga had to rush a little is really, I, I really like that. The animation style looks gorgeous. Maybe I should bump it down to good just because like, I have heard that the, the new season's a little lower in production quality, but, you know, I'd have to judge that for myself. And what I've seen of this return to TV so far, I've loved. All right, well, let's keep going. Bungo Stray Dogs. This is, I can only put this in good because I haven't, you know, seen past the first couple episodes myself. Um, I've always been interested in following up on Bungo. Uh, I, I have heard nothing but good stuff about it and what I saw was good but like I felt like I should read some Japanese literature to really get the nuances of what they're referencing before getting into this and I never did because who's got the time yeah it's got good fights it's bones so the animation is always gonna be great I know lots of people are huge fans of it um I would like to but you know it's five seasons in so it's a big commitment all right next up Card fight Vanguard will dress. I'm gonna throw this in mid. I didn't, there's parts of it I really enjoyed. I kind of liked how trigger they got with some of the fight animation, but like didn't grab me enough to continue. It's a, you know, it's a card game anime. It's an anime about card games. They play card games in it. I know it's got some, some big fans, but you know, it's also for kids, like younger kids. And I, I've grown out of that by now. The Masterful Cat is depressed again today. Uh, this one I'm going to throw in good, and I'm surprised I'm saying that, because as you might even be able to tell from this uh, screenshot, this is a Gohans anime. But they they tone down the Gohansiness a lot, in a lot of places. The the characters are, are really fun. Um, the big cat feels like a cat. It's not nearly as headache-inducing as the other one, at least in my experience. The animation on the characters is is good. It, it's got some good comedy. You know, compared to the other one that they got this season, 
Um, I, th I, th I think it's pretty fun. And yeah, yeah, they, they really they really play up how much of that headache inducing Sakuga there is in it in the trailer versus the actual show. Uh, all right, next up, uh, Classroom for Heroes. Uh, this one's a harem anime. It's kind of fun. I, I, I feel like it's it's gonna get trashier as it goes along. So far, it's been like a low level trash show. Might fall into you know the good to mid range if it doesn't keep the trashiness up. Only one character got her clothes torn off in the whole first episode. You know, overall, it's it's a fun little thing. It's about a, a classroom for heroes. You know, in one of those. Oh, you gotta beat the Demon King. We'll set up a school where you can learn to be a hero and beat the Demon King, that sort of thing. Main character uh, has, he was apparently super duper OP at some point in the past, has gotten less OP with time, might get more OP in the future. It's kind of stuff happening. But his goal is to make a hundred friends, most of whom will be hot ladies. The directing is weird and the action isn't bad. That's, yeah, that's basically where I, where I sit on it. Next up, we got uh, Dark Gathering, which is a horror anime that is actually spooky. Kind of self-explanatory why I'm throwing it in there. Most horror anime is not great. This actually, like, legit gave me shivers. It's got great atmosphere. The body horror actually, like, hits. It's about uh, a guy who can see ghosts trying to work his way back into society by like going back to college, gets a job as a tutor. Uh, first tutoring job is for a girl who can also see ghosts. The ghosts don't like to see her though. Ghosts are super attracted to him. They always want to like crowd around him. Uh, they don't want to see her though because she's fucking scary. She's got like a collection of spirits that she's trapped in her stuffed animals. Um, and they're all fucking terrified of her. Uh, so she needs him to help her find more spirits because he spirits he's like ghost catnip it's got a really fun dynamic it is for people who like to be scared so if that's you check it out uh all right next up uh oh man this hurts me i gotta put hadaraku mao sama new seasons in mid that really hurts me this is such a good series back in the day but it just when it came back, it just, you know, it hurts. Hadaraku Maosama, the overlord at work, sorry. Or the overlord is a, or the devil is a part-timer, sorry. The overlord at work is the, you know, the direct translation of that title. Uh, the devil is a part-timer. The premise is um, the, the demon king of another world gets defeated by a hero, comes to Earth, um, loses all his powers and becomes a middle manager at McDonald's, vowing to work his way up the corporate ladder and take over the world. It's, um, it's, it was a lot of fun, very quirky, reverse isekai with a great sense of humor, um, but they really dropped the ball on the adaptation of the new, new seasons. Um, it's just, the pacing sucks, the animation sucks, and yeah, the first season's amazing. Um, it's kind of like, kind of Samurai Jack vibes almost, like the, the premise of like the Demon King flees to another world and the hero who beat him follows only to, to like, you know, find out the world's not what they expect. But it's like an inverse Samurai Jack where the Demon King's actually really nice. Um, hero's kind of nice too, but it takes her a while to get there. Okay, next up, the Duke of Death and his Maid. So this is, this is an interesting one, because, like, I've watched a couple episodes. The story and characters are really good. Um, but, like, like I, I want to throw it in good. I might even throw it in banger if it was, like, a great adaptation. But, unfortunately, it uses really, really awkward CGI that holds it back a lot. You know, I'm, I'm not one to get too hung up on CGI a lot of the time if it's if it's all right, but like this looks really awkward. It's from the same uh, people who made High Score Girl, if any of you guys have seen that, which also had like some real awkward CGI. And it makes it, you know, there's a certain point where it makes it like hard to connect to the characters. So the premise is this guy's from a rich family. He was born with a curse that, you know, Anything he touches dies. 
Um, so he's got to wear gloves all the time, and he's isolated in this mansion alone with only his maid, but his maid is in love with him, and he's in love with her, and they're, like, trying to, like, break the curse so they can be together. So it's sweet. It's a really good story. There's a lot of, like, good stuff going for it. And, like, if this was the manga, I think I'd probably throw it in good or banger. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm iffy on this. Maybe I should move it up to good. Maybe I should move it up to good. It's hard for me to watch, personally. Um, the CG bugs me a lot. Uh, and I'm not normally somebody who... who gets hung up on that but if you enjoyed high, high score girl maybe check it out uh gene of i i'm torn on whether to put this in you know it's it's like right at the edge of banger but i think i'm gonna have to put it at like the top of good it's uh it's an interesting one so it's it's about a doctor for sentient robots um he's not a robot himself so it's set in this world where about like 10 percent of the population is humanoid robots that are almost indistinguishable from people and they've got full rights they've got that figured out but it's illegal to make copies of ai brains because of all the implications of that um and he's a back alley robot doctor who explores the implications of the stuff that's illegal yeah it's it's interesting the adaptation i think holds it back a little bit but yeah it's a solid story overall it's just held back a little bit by the production values i think it's, it's a very interesting setting. It's got lots of high, interesting, high concept sci-fi ideas. Like the main character's got like a uh, self-driving car that um, tells him if he drives it himself, his insurance is gonna be voided. Uh, next up, what's this called? The Great Cleric, right? I normally would never throw the insult of made by an AI at something that was made with real human hands. But like, this more than almost any isekai I've ever seen feels like it was made by an AI on every level. The backgrounds are so bland. The character designs are fucking ugly and simple and the animation sucks. And like the story is literally just, a guy wakes up in another world. He decides what his powers will be. He goes to a town where he finds out that those powers make him super special. Uh, he goes to train his powers and he does, he does training and he levels up a whole bunch. And like literally the level up process is he just sits in his room casting heal over and over again for a week. It's so, it's so, it's, it's just boring as shit. All right, next up, My Happy Marriage, solid banger. Um, seems like a period romance piece at first, but it's got some supernatural elements that reveal themselves in time. Um, it's uh, available on Netflix. It's actually getting a simul dub, which is pretty rare nowadays. Uh, in the post-Funimation era. The premise is, it's kind of like a Cinderella-type story. This girl is, um, she's from a really rich family that treats her like shit while her sister is doted on. And the reason for that is that in this version of Japan, people have psychic powers that let them see invisible monsters and also give them other psychic powers, and her sister inherited them. She didn't. Uh, it's got, like, Tons of world building, and yeah, it's it's a shoujo, or maybe a jose, but like that's rare enough as it is. It's really solid romance. If you're if you're in the mood for like a, a maybe even a good cry or, or just a good like warm fuzzy, that's the show to check out for sure. It's not at the bottom of banger. It's just getting mixed around. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm not really ranking these by. Maybe I should. It'll take longer, but yeah, I'll throw it under Spellblades for now. Helk. From what I've seen so far, I'm going to put it in good. But from what I've heard about the manga, it will at some point move up to banger. For now, I'm putting it in good. Helk is uh, a story about a human hero who is uh, competing in a tournament to become the Demon King because he hates humans and wants to wipe them all out. It's a very funny comedy. It apparently has some, like, heavier stuff in the story later on, from what I've heard. Didn't want to get spoiled on it. I, I don't know about Hulk going... Yeah, I feel like Top of Good is a good place to put it for now. All right, next up, throw this in the middle of good. This is the most heretical last boss queen 
um, from villainous to savior. It's uh, really, it's a more emotional and melodramatic take on the concept of uh, Baccarina. I, f I forget what the actual name of Baccarina is. I just always call it Baccarina. It's got some neat ideas, I but like my overall impression is I feel like the visual novel that she's rewriting was more interesting than the story the anime has told so far. That's kind of where I fall on it. But I have also heard stuff about where it's going that it, it might get better. Protag's a way more competent Katarina, which makes it lose a bit of the charm. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at. I mean, I do like the idea that like people get memories of all the horrible stuff that she did to them in other timelines and like they react to that differently. There's like a lot of potential for drama. Yeah, my next life is a villainous. All roots lead to doom. That's right. I just Bacarina, you know? But you know, like it did it it did hit me emotionally a couple times in the first episode. I do feel like she feels a little too guilty for the stuff that she is going that she hasn't even done yet that her character did in other timelines you know like that that feels a little not unearned but it feels weird she she like has like a really big complex about the horrible things that she's gonna do or has done but she hasn't done them right that wasn't her that was a character in a video game it's just weird uh hori mia the Lost Pieces, or The Missing Pieces, that's a banger. Original Hori Mia is a banger. The, I mean, held back a little bit just because it's it, it's not a cohesive story. It's like bits and pieces of the manga that weren't adapted into the original run of the anime. But like these characters are so good. It, it works even as just like a disconnected slice of life story. Hori Mia is a banger. Can't complain about more Hori Mia. On the same note, Jujutsu Kaisen is a banger. Cannot complain about more Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm actually throwing that way up here. I'm, I'm putting that at the top of the banger tier for now because um, I know where this season is going. This is one that I'm, I'm, you know, fully caught up on. But also, I know where this season's going. I've read ahead in the manga and... <sighs> Shibuya absolute all-time greatest shonen arcs. Shibuya is the equivalent to the Paramount War for Jujutsu. Yeah, no, it's it's probably in my top five all-time anime, like, like shonen arcs. All right, next up, uh, level one uh, Demon King and one room hero. It's a comedy. I'm going to throw it right at the top of good below the stuff that actually, like, made the ones to watch. It's really funny. The reason I, I didn't put it over Helk is just like, there's some parts of the premise that don't like super track for me, but like the jokes just, they land. It's really, really funny. So the idea is um, this guy defeats the Demon King. 10 years later, the Demon King comes back, reincarnates prematurely as like a little gremlin who can't do nothing just to inflict misery on his arch nemesis before he dies but then he finds the hero and the hero uh in the last 10 years was just completely canceled lost all his sponsorships celebrity scandal after celebrity scandal he's a washed up loser living in a one-room apartment spending every day jacking off um so the demon lord decides to help him get back on his feet just to knock him down properly really fun idea uh solid solid comedy um, good fan service too. Actually, like I'm, I'm kind of tempted to throw it at the top of trash. I feel like it might belong there. I feel like it might be a hottest trash contender. It's really funny. All right, next up, liar liar. I don't know whether I want to put this in trash or bad, to be honest, or maybe mid. I. I'll throw it at the bottom of trash. It, it wants to be like a really trashy, like harem thing with these fun ideas. So the, the idea is it's like a classroom of the elite, Baka and test type scenario where they're at this really fancy high tech school where everybody is ranked with stars and you um, win stars by winning games. Because of the star rating system, the closest point of comparison is actually the episode of Community where the whole school gets taken over by the social media ranking app. So the whole idea is he he's 
walking around um, the campus. He meets the girl with like the toppest of top ranks, who's also the daughter of the the principal. He doesn't know that. He asks her for directions to his school. She helps him, but then she gets hit by a sprinkler and she thinks it was a devious plot on his part. So she challenges him to a battle through a series of very absurd coincidences. Yeah, I'm throwing it in mid. I don't, I don't fucking, maybe bad, maybe bad. I don't. So through a series of absurd coincidences, she ends up losing her star to him. And the star that she loses to him is the magic red liar star that lets you tell a lie. And actually, she is not the daughter of the, the principal or the, the head of the board or whatever. She's secretly, she, she was her friend from school and that girl has been kidnapped, so she's got to pretend to be her. And anybody who gets the liar star can tell what all the past lies are. So he uses his lie to pretend he's got seven stars um, at the behest of the company that runs the school because they don't want all these different scandals to happen. He gets like a team led by this maid that helps him cheat in games. So like the idea that the games might have some strategy just goes out the fucking window and it's just like, oh, we hacked, we hacked the game, so you won again. It's bad. It's just bad. It's, it's trying to do too many things at once. Very poorly animated. It, it goes for like a comedic angle where the guy does like the arrogant, like Lelouch style douchebag. I'm the greatest and you'll have to come beat me. And then he goes off and he's like, oh my God, that was so cringe. Why'd I say that? Yeah, dude, why did you say that? There's lots of ways to play up that you're the, the coolest dude without coming off like a fucking douchebag. Yeah, the more I talk about it, the more I realize I just hate it. I. I just hate it. Link click, banger. I need I need to watch season two, uh, but you know, I did not mention it because I didn't know it was out because they didn't put it on MAL, but Link Click season two is out. It's a banger. Yeah, more Link Click, cannot complain. So it's about these guys who ha have time travel powers related to photos. So one of them can dive into the mind of somebody, the person who took a photo in the past. By doing that, they solve mysteries, but they they can change stuff, but also they can't, and a lot of stuff happens. Um, it's just really good. It's a Chinese animated series, one of the best ever made. Next up, Masamune Kun's Revenge. See, I have heard this new season's better, but that might just also be people who weren't filtered out by the first season who are still watching it. For me, based on what I saw of the first season, I gotta throw it in mid. Um, maybe, maybe I'll watch more of it for Hottest Trash. See, like, I enjoyed the first episode, but then, like, my interest really fell off of it. I might, I might be being too harsh on it. I feel like I should watch a couple more episodes to see how I feel. It's the same as the first season so far. I think they're actually gonna resolve the misunderstanding soon, though. That might bump it up to good, then. Uh, for now, I'm throwing it in mid, but... Um, it has the potential to go up, so I'll throw it towards the top of mid. Alright, next up, Monono Gatari. I'm gonna throw that at the bottom of good. Maybe a little above cat and maid. Yeah, so this is a story about, um... And it says Monono, like Mononoke in it, but it's all, um, Sukumogami. The, uh, spirits of, like, uh objects with a lot of history around them. So the idea is that like the spirits of objects come to life and wreak havoc in Tokyo and there's people tasked with clearing them up and and um, this guy is part of a family of exorcists uh, but his family was killed by one of them so he, he's like racist against all the Tsukumogami. Actually, you know, yeah, I, I put Ayaka pretty high. I'm gonna throw that toward the bottom of good because I, I, you know, kind of edging on mid. I don't have much more to say about it. Seems like a pretty good action series with some fun concepts. Uh, I didn't get super into the first couple episodes that I watched back in the day, but the trailer for the new season got me really hyped. So I think I, I feel pretty comfortable putting it in good. All right, moving on. Mushoku Tensei is a banger. Putting it near the top of bangers, honestly. Just some of the best fantasy world building, magic animation, character writing, in in anime right now i i i love it i love it so much i think everybody should watch mushoku tensei 
in spite of the icky stuff about the character, it's it's a really good story about redemption and making yourself a better person. You know, considering that I may be about to throw another anime into into like a trash bin for things similar to the proclivities of the protagonist, that's um that's uh you know, you might you might read that as weird, but like it's it's just really good. It's some of the best character writing you will find in anime, period. Some of the best world building. Can't recommend it enough. Glasses girl banger if you don't wear glasses. Yeah, I'm I'm throwing that in bad. I feel like it could have been mid without the Gohans animation. I'm putting it above Liar Liar though. Actually, I'm putting it above both Liar Liar and Cleric. Wait, if it's at the top of bad, does that make it worse? Yeah, I, I think I think I have I've immediately decided that the top of bad is worse. It's almost trash, honestly. It's hard to watch. And normally when I say something's hard to watch, it's like Mushoku Tensei where it like makes you uncomfortable. But in this case, it's hard to watch because literally it will give you a fucking headache. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. I did a reaction video to it that I would love to throw to. That got taken down for copyright reasons, but you can check that out on my Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Mother's Basement, I believe, because I re-uploaded it there. Anyone who pledges a dollar gets to watch all my uncensored videos. Anything that gets taken down for copyright will be up there from now on. Okay, let's move on from that. Uh, I'm gonna throw my secret ability makes me OP even at level one. I'm gonna throw that in mid. I feel like maybe it, it could be... I mean, there, there's a lot about it that is trashy, Main character moves in with, like, a little girl 10 minutes into episode one. Maybe it's trash. Maybe it's trash. I don't know. It's just kind of mid-trash so far. So the I, it's another one of those anime where the time to stat screen is, like, five minutes. But the difference is, he doesn't get lots of OP stats, and he can't level up even at first. But he, he so his only OP stat is he has the highest drop rate. And in this world, the only way to get any commodity is to have it drop from a monster. I mean, that's that's kind of the whole story. Um, so he's he's got the best drop rate that anybody's ever had. Um, and he finds a secret dungeon uh, made just for him. Not the secret dungeon only I can enter, that's better trash. Um, where the monsters drop these seeds that give you skill ups. So he gets his skills up, even though his level is trash. Any, it's just, it's silly. I'll, I'll throw it in trash because I just remembered there's a bunny girl who comes after him at the end of the first episode. My tiny senpai, that's also trash, which is weird because I've heard the manga isn't trash, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like um, my senpai is annoying. There's a lot of work like life comedies where there's like a big dude and a short short stack girl. It's like my senpai is annoying, but also going for Uzaki-kun. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I guess it's like a cute workplace rom-com, but like it's, it's a cute short stack girl with big titties. Uh, every other thing that she says is like very easy to misinterpret as sexual. That's the joke. That's the whole joke. If you enjoy that, is laughs to be had there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, my bad. I do need another tier. We're just, uh, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on from this one. We're not talking about it. The less that we say about the creator of that, the better. Hypothetically, if I were to offer any opinion about a remake of an anime made by somebody who got like arrested for CP, all I would say is not even as good as the 90s anime so like who cares <laughs> um oku the inner chambers that's going right in banger um that one i didn't i was hesitant to include on the seasonal list because it's technically not seasonal it's an ona that's up on um uh netflix just came out all 10 episodes are already out but it's really good and i wanted to include it here just because like it's really good um, so the premise is it's an alternate history. Japan, I don't know where to put it in bangers. I'm going to put it below Dark Gathering just because, or you know what? Bangers isn't really in order. I'll just put it at the end so it doesn't seem like I'm doing any favoritism. Set in an alternate history Meiji era Japan, or not Me 
Meiji era? Edo era. It's set in an alternate history, Edo era Japan, um, where the male population of the nation has been reduced to a quarter by this virulent plague that only kills men. So men have become like a very prized commodity in society and women have kind of taken over the world. The shogun's a woman, uh, you know, all the bureaucracy is run by women and, and like the world building is so deep. It's really, really interesting. They, they like go into all these different things about how the society's set up. And the story centers around the Oku, which is the inner chamber, the uh, harem of 800 handsome men. The, only the shogun of Japan is allowed to even see these men. No other women are around, uh, allowed near them. And it's got all sorts of like politics and, and you know, men being catty bitches. It's really, it's dark. It's fascinating. Can't recommend it enough. If you, uh, if you're into historical dramas, alternate history, you want to learn more about Japanese history, it's, it's pretty good for that. Uh, Oku, O-O-K-U, the inner chamber. Fair warning, like, trigger warning, it get, it goes to some shawshank -y places in episode one. You know, because 800 men who live their entire lives together in one place, stuff's gonna happen. Reborn is a vending machine, I'm gonna throw at the top of good, maybe behind Helk? Reborn is definitely good, I feel like it needs like a little something extra to, to like make it to an all time banger. Yeah, Reborn is a vending machine. I did not expect to be great, but it's great. But yeah, it's so much better than I thought it would be. Um, like, you know, the, the idea of Reborn as a vending machine just seems goofy, but like they really, you know, it really explores it. Apparently it was, it was like the author, um, his dad owned a store and died falling off of a ladder. And he was like, oh, that, that gave him this notion of like, oh shit, I better get my dreams accomplished before something happens to me. He always wanted to be a writer, pitched a bunch of isekai, none of them really took off. But then he was like, you know what? I got this idea, it's all mine. Um, and he, he, he just wrote whatever the fuck he wanted and turned out really good. People loved it, you know, it's gotten anime. It's a top seller. If you're, you know, if you're bored with Isekai, I definitely recommend checking it out. Next up, I, I don't, I, I put this list together and I don't actually recognize that shit. Oh, it's Record of Ragnarok 2. That's, um, yeah, that's going in bad. That's going in bad, 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 bad. Uh, but Record of Ragnarok fucking sucks. Manga's pretty good. Uh, adaptation is terrible. I already talked about this when I put it on the worst anime of the year list for the year that it came out. But I just want to, since this has gone around a couple times, I just want to put out there, I did a reaction for Netflix to Record of Ragnarok Season 1 where I was positive on it. And the reason for that, the reason that I and Garnt and everybody else who was on that reaction was positive is because they cut like three episodes worth of fight that was like padded out with exposition and bullshit down to one 10 minute chunk that that like was actually fun to watch. Um, I thought that I was watching just like 10 minutes of episode one. So that is why my reaction to that was positive. If anybody is curious. <laughs> Record of Ragnarok is one of the worst anime adaptations I think of all time. I guess I should put that at the top of bad then. I, I don't even know how these fucking rankings are working anymore. It's too many images. My brain ain't, my brain ain't reading it. Not even roastable. I feel like honestly, it's, it's, it's so slow and the things that make it bad aren't ridiculous or fun. They're just poor execution. You know what I mean? All right, let's move on. Um, Pastor Lawrence and St. Cecilia. This might be contentious, but I'm gonna throw this one in mid. It just, it's not hitting for me. It's, it's, it's Dogakobo, who normally make like really very prettily animated stuff. And it's, it's like a slice of life comedy about this priest or pastor um, who lives with a saint. And the saint is like all saintly, but then when they're alone, she's all lazy. And that's the joke. I guess it's upper echelon of mid. There were a couple minutes that like charmed me, I guess. But like, 
you know, it's it's so predictable from minute one. You can feel every beat of the story before it happens. Like, you know, he's very serious and kind of dense and he doesn't get that she's got a crush on him. She's got a crush on him. There's like some light world building. Like it's it's sort of Christian, but like, you know, in, in the same way that like, Kung Fu Panda is like vaguely Taoist. They got this world building that saints are sent by God and they have the ability to see angels, but angels are just little balls of light. And they, um, you know, they they can't lie. And it's, it's, it's boring. Yeah, it's boring. Shadowverse, mid. I don't know if I even should have thrown this one in, in here because it's just another toy anime. You know, it's, it's, it's mid. It's more Shadowverse. But yeah, all right, let's move on. Um, Spy Classroom, I'm going to throw in bad. Because I thought it was bad. I did not enjoy it very much. Sorry. I know Spy Classroom got some fans. I think it got some fans. It's still one of the worst plot twists, I think, of, of any anime I've seen. It just... Ah, oh, the way... It handles everything past there. The structure of it is just not... I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it at all. Does anything beat Oshinoko this year? Oshinoko is definitely going to be at the top, but ZOM 100 also might, depending on how well they adapt later parts of it. Like, I've been reading more of the manga now. I mean, we'll get there when we get there. Um, it's right at the end of the, the, the uh, tier list, but like... I just got through the truck stop of the dead arc. That shit's really good. It it hits on ideas of like abuse and control and that's going to be a really solid two-parter. I shouldn't be talking about Zom 100 right now. I I should be saving this for when we actually get to Zom 100 or maybe I should just throw it on the list now. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Zom 100 going at the top of banger tier. Breaking all the rules here. Screw the rules. I have money, etc., etc. I love this fucking anime. The, I'm gradually becoming more and more obsessed with the manga. It's it's good on so many levels. Like the the adaptation, um, it's it's Komi Can't Communicate's director who's really good at like that cinematic, highly fluid animation style. When they move the camera, they actually do it for a reason. Handshakers, go hands. Please take notice. But yeah, it it. It's a very good adaptation. The chapters of the manga that I've read so far, just everyone's been like a great mix of comedy, action, a little bit of horror. You know, like it's it's a story written with the understanding that zombies aren't that scary anymore. It still gets into, you know, the, the people being scarier than zombies idea. I mean, Truck Stop of the Dead really gets into that. Jeff, be honest, you jumped to Zomb because next was Rent a Girlfriend. What? No, 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 no. Okay. I mean, I am kind of, I don't know whether to put this in mid or bad, to be honest. The thing, the worst thing about Rent a Girlfriend really is that it's not bad enough. You know what I mean? But it's so mid it is bad, but then it's so not bad that it's mid. It's so, I'm gonna have to put it in bad. I'm gonna have to put it in bad. I'd rather watch a bad show than a mid show most of the time. So maybe I should throw it in mid. It is kind of like the true mid of harem anime execution. But then sometimes it goes like really bad, like that pool scene. Yeah, I, th I think bad, I think bad. All right, I'm gonna move on from it though. Cause if I'm, I, I'm sure I will have to subject myself to talking about it at some point in the future. And yeah, I too have been Stockholmed by Rent a Girlfriend. I'm gonna throw Sugar Apple Fairy Tale in good. I haven't seen that much of it, to be fair. I've only watched like three episodes of the first season, but I enjoyed what I saw of it. It's a really solid fantasy series with like interesting world building, beautiful animation, solid overall. Okay, next up, I'm putting it, I'm putting uh, Sweet Reincarnation at the very bottom of good. Maybe I need another tier that's just okay. I might do that next time because it's pretty okay i enjoyed it yeah I, I think i need an okay tier okay then if we're doing that throw an ayaka in there duke of death 
Sweet Reincarnation. Sweet Reincarnation... Yeah. Okay, I have officially decided that stuff's moving to the OK tier. And then we can move St. Cecilia up, too. Alright? Alright? Everybody okay with that? Okay, then, you know what? We can... That gives us... Make OK yellow. There! There we go. 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 Thank you for your help, chat. This was some really good graphic design work you guys did here. So far, Sweet Reincarnation was a bit disappointing to me since I wanted a lot more cooking and less fighting bandits, but that could have just been my expectations. No, that's fair. That's kind of where I'm hitting on it, where he does a little too much fighting bandits. It's, it's a little bit too much the stuff you see in every isekai. What I like about it is the magic system has like a cool sense of like ritualism to it. World is like, has, has like interesting layers. Um, and the politics are like pretty well thought out. I said in the, the ones to watch, it feels like we have Bookworm at home and I love Bookworm. So that kind of made me enjoy watching it a lot. But I also think it's just okay and the production qualities really drag it down, which is saying something if I'm comparing it to Bookworm, right? Because Bookworm was good enough to be great despite looking like crap a lot of the time. Uh, okay, next up. I'm gonna throw uh, Sinduality Noir up at the up a, up at the top of good. Uh, I, it might end up being a banger. It's like it's hitting for me. I really like the characters. I like the setting, but the setting's also kind of very generic. Um, and the main thing carrying it for me right now is I know it's created by the guy who created Bunny Girl Senpai, and I really like Bunny Girl Senpai. So yeah, it might fall off. There is a distinct chance that it will fall off because... Actually, you know what? I'm going to throw Bastard in okay, too. Just because I'm going to throw Bastard in there. All right. Tenpuru. That's going near the top of trash. That's some really good trash right there. It's a very, very, very horny-ass horror anime. That's a lot, a lot of... That's, that sums up a lot of it right there. So the, the main character... The, the first scene is so incredible because it's just the main character's dad being like hey sport you know how having friends is really great right and he says yeah well i i got to thinking about that and i thought no that that means having lots of lovers is great too wow you're so cool dad i sure am where are you going dad i'm gonna meet all the women of the world and make them my friend goodbye son goodbye dad you're the coolest basically the ging freaks of harem anime he swears off women forever because he doesn't want to be like his piece of shit dad but then he meets a woman who he falls in love with at first sight cannot stand all the pent-up feelings that are coming out so he goes to a temple to become a monk and renounce his worldly desires but when he gets to the temple, the girl is there, and so are a bunch of other girls. Turns out it's a nunnery full of extremely hot women, so he can't stay there, except his piece of shit dad owes the temple hundreds of thousands of yen, so yes, he can, as their slave. And that's, that's the premise. The plot doesn't super track, if you think about it at all, but it's pretty funny. All the girls are insanely hot. Um, and it's very funny. I'm gonna move the, you know what? Cat anime also bl belongs at the top of okay. I'm gonna stop moving stuff now. I promise. Now, this anime, The Dreaming Boy is a Realist, I don't know whether to put it in mid or bad. Again, I'm, I think I'm gonna throw it in mid because my main feeling toward it is it's extremely boring, but it's also very confusing to the point that like, for half the first episode, I didn't know if the main character had suffered a traumatic head injury or like another person had taken over his body or he suddenly had amnesia. He just has like the most dramatic character change. It's not really explained why. So the, the, the idea is this guy has had a crush on this girl he sits next to in class for years and years and years and he keeps asking her out and he keeps she keeps saying no and like everybody thinks of him as a stalker and then finally he's like oh i'm making her uncomfortable i should stop another girl starts hitting on him out of the blue it's just it's weird the plot's all over the place i didn't feel anything the whole time i was watching it 
It's, uh, I guess you could take it as an epiphany, but like, it's not very well justified how it happens and the writing doesn't really help. And the effect that they throw around it when he has the epiphany makes it seem like something more significant. It's just, yeah, it's mid. It's mid. Makes me sad to say this, but I might have to throw this here too. Or maybe, you know, I, I think now that we got the okay tier, I'm comfortable putting Atelier Thiza in the okay slot. Wait, what did I say? Atelier Thiza. Thiza. R Y Z A. Thiza. I can't say it any different. Anyway, Atelier Thiza is an adaptation of a pretty darn good JRPG that's kind of a, you know, slice of lifey sim. Um, with some light adventure elements. The main features of the game are its alchemy system, which lets you craft all sorts of things. That's the mainstay of the series. You know, laid back atmosphere and the fucking thighs, man. Oh my God. And the anime definitely gets that. So many shots of that. This is definitely I, get, getting to mention in the hottest trash. Like many anime adaptations of video games, it just kind of feels like you're watching somebody play the video game and it's not, it's, it's just kind of boring to watch. And that sucks. They gave it an hour long, almost feature length premiere to like introduce the world and the characters. And it's just kind of boring. It's got its charms, very nice animation in a lot of places. Uh, I like the characters, makes me want to play the game, but that's about the best I can say for it. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. Uh, Undead Murder Farce is definitely a banger. One of the bangingest bangers of the season, in fact. Can't say enough good things about it, honestly. If you like anime, check it out. It's a really cool premise. It's, it's uh, set in an alternate Meiji era, which is why if you remember ages ago when I misspoke about um, Oku being set in the Edo era, that's why. Uh, or being set in the Meiji era. Um, but yeah, uh, so it's set in an alternate Meiji era where the emperor has vowed to eradicate all of the supernatural creatures in Japan in the name of westernization. The main character is a half oni who works in a circus, like beating the shit out of other monsters to um, entertain the crowds. Uh, but he's slowly gonna lose his mind to the monster inside of him and eventually tear up all the people outside. He's kind of banking on that as his last bit of entertainment before he goes out. But then a lady who is a head in a birdcage comes up to him with an alternate proposal to kill her and she'll let him live longer. Um, but because someone stole her body, her immortal body, which has the power to stop him from turning into a monster. But then it turns out the guy who stole her body is the same guy who turned him into a half monster in the first place. So instead they team up as a mystery solving duo, go to Europe, start solving mysteries for the European monster population, such as vampires and werewolves and so on, in order to track down the top-hatted gentleman who screwed with both of them and get her body back and get revenge. Very fun, very funny, incredible action. Uh, great characters, just hits on every level. Go watch it. Okay, we're, we're on our last anime. Johanne the Parhelion, Sunshine in the Mirror, which is going firmly in good tier. I wanna put it pretty high in good tier too. So Johanne the Parhelion, Sunshine in the Mirror is a spin-off of Love Live Sunshine, which I have not seen, but I have heard is the best Love Live. Um, it stars Johanne, uh, the alternate persona of Yoshiko-chan, I believe, who's one of the idols in Love Live. Her, her thing is she's really chuny, loves anime, loves RPGs, all that sort of stuff. She, she's got all these chuny delusions in the main series. April last year, April 1st, they announced that they were doing a story about her chuny alter ego, which people thought was a joke. Uh, in a set in a fantasy world, which has like a lot of like modern Japanese elements in it. There's robots, there's magic, you know, there's a common rider, people have cars, but also, you know, 
So it's modern fantasy, which you don't see often, and I really like the world building. It's, you know, a cute slice of lifey thing, but there's a little bit of action to it. They got a lot of dancing and singing, obviously, because it's fucking Love Live. Of course they do. There's a Metroidvania game coming out in like a couple months, too, that seems like it's pretty good. Really nice p pixel art. If you don't like Love Live, but you're on the fence about trying it out, I think this is a pretty good one to get into it to, to like give it a try it does a good job of introducing the characters on its own terms as its own story so it doesn't like feel like you need to have seen sunshine to enjoy it i'm gonna put it below sin duality though because i like sin duality a little more it's good it's it's very good very very nicely animated uh there's a talking dog i like the talking dog it's cute slice of life not a lot i can say about it without like going into plot spoilers, which don't matter that much, but, like, it's got all of the charms of the main Love Live series, but in a fantasy world. If you do like Love Live, you're probably watching it already, but it's good. Thank you so much for coming out to watch the new... Not really the ones to watch. Uh, I did a tier list of the whole anime season, and this is that tier list. That's the name of this series now. <laughs> I'm very tired. Uh, we've been at this for almost three hours now. Hey, Jeff from the future here one more time to remind you that if you like this video, which you probably did considering how long it is and the fact that you're still here, uh, that it was originally done over at twitch.tv slash Jeff Thu. So if you want to see me make more things like this in the future or suffer through fear and hunger or other video games, come give me a follow, please, and thank you. All right, I'm going to go pose in front of this green screen for the thumbnail. I'll see you guys next time.